simple, decent people. You like them. Please, Buddy. Don't waste any energy or time being embarrassed. They've been told just as much as they need to know. How much was that one, please? How much does anyone need to know about it? Eugene. Eugene, please. Welcome to Steenkamp's Crawl, Advocate Murray. I'll get your suitcase. Good afternoon, Ungus. Good afternoon. Come meet the family. How's the leg, Ungus? Oh, much better, thank you, doctor. Much better. You know, I had to fix the backside the other day and it didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> Good afternoon, Tom Corey. Afternoon, Dr. Pepper. Corey? Have a good morning. This is my wife, Corey. Pleased to meet you. And my son, Dursi. And this is our little lad, Lamiti. This is little Corey. It was Louis that opened the gate for you. I've just taken some rusks out of the oven. I think Advocate Murray would like to rest first, of course. Of course. Um, yes, follow me. Thank you, Louis. Your gift, yeah? And bless the game. Right. Well, it's not as grand as you're used to, I'm sure, but we'll do our best to make you comfortable. We know you will, Umdurs. I'll just help Advocate Murray to unpack, then I'll be with you. So just call if you need anything, huh? Sit down, Eugene. So brought your papers on the baboon. They'll move a table in here for you. As soon as you're ready to start working again. Where will they put it, Andres? Three beds. Louis and Dorsey have agreed to sleep in here with you. Now, until you feel better. Eugene, Bree, I know it won't be easy, but you've done it before and you can do it again. Easy? No, Andres, you don't know. When will I see you again? I don't think like that, but he... Stinkham's stall isn't all that far from Heidelberg. I'll come out whenever I've got a spare moment. Not yet. We haven't discussed everything properly. Yes, we have. You can't just leave me like this. I have to, Eugene. It's not going to work, Andres. It will. Yeah. Better take these now. Supply, Undos. You, you know how many to give. Yeah, ten in the morning, ten in the evening, until you tell me otherwise. Under no condition 
more or less yeah. until you hear from me. Yeah. We must give him time to settle in first. Now, when I think we're ready to start reducing the dosage, I will either come out myself or send you a letter with Steel when he comes to fetch a week supply. And that's on Mondays. Right. Now, warn Steely he must not take any messages from Advocate Murray to anyone in town. Yeah. Remember what I said, Ambrose. He's, uh, he's very sick, so it won't be easy. But Advocate Murray could become Chief Justice. If we can get him back to good health. Who else will know where they are? Nobody. Um, Dulles, yeah, no. try to get the others to understand that... Oh, thank you. That you are... Uh, they're all still strangers to him, so... Uh, they will feel lonely yeah. and embarrassed because of his condition mm. to start with. But uh, most important of all, under no circumstances, more or less now than I told you. Yes, of course. He's a sick man, but also a very clever one. When a clever man gets desperate. I understand, Doctor. But still, comes Kral will get him right. I hope so, Ndur. Because he's also a very dear friend of mine. Doctor, we'll treat him like one of the family. Thank you. Goodbye, Doctor. Doctor, Doctor. 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 Carmen Aiki. He slaughtered yesterday. Uncle Corey, you're a dear. Thank you. Thank you, Dorsey. He looks sick, eh, Pa? Yeah, well, that's why he's here. Fresh air and your mother's cooking. That's what he needs. And his medicine, of course. How must we call him, Pa? Advocate Marais or Mr. Marais? Oh, yeah, Louis, I don't know. Maybe he's even a bloody professor. <laughs> is a predominant element of consciousness and in which some quality of suffering is inseparable from thought that all joy creating poisons constitute the greatest threat all of them have one property in common the first and chief physiological effect is a temporary feeling of happiness which wears off as the poison is eliminated by the system Mr. Marais? Mr. Marais? Door is still locked. Come over here. The doctor said the pills would make him sleepy. But he must also eat to us. Yeah. Oh, Louis. Will you go outside by the window and see if he's all right? Only me, Louis. Something wrong, Mr. Marais? Picture. How's that? <laughs> Louis Meyer and Eugene Marais. 
Leave the poor man alone now. You're not saying anything bad, Ma. I didn't say you were. But I think all this sort of talk is just going to make things harder for him. Let's treat him like, like one of the family. Mm. Like any other ordinary person. He's not, Ma. Dr. Fisher said so himself. What is now actually wrong with him, Pa? Now, according to the doctor, you know, he's got some sort of fever. Fever? Hmm. You know, hot and cold with shivers. But one thing I do know, his medicine has blacks him strongly. Now, my group bones are blue in, and that the spring can, as if Selvin, in last salvation. En dat de lust zal vergaan. Want de mens gaat naar zijn eeuwig huis. En de rookachers zullen in de straat omgaan. Almighty and merciful Father, we thank thee for this day for food, clothing and shelter. And please God. Extend thy mercy to the sick man who has taken shelter under our roof. Hallowed be thy name. Amen. Uh, you okay, Mr. Murray? No. What's the time? Time? We don't worry too much about the time you're at, Mr. Murray. Uh, Pa's got the clock. What's the date? Date. Monday. The date. Uh, June 1926. Everything all right? Oh, yeah, I had a bad dream, that's all, Pa. Uh, well, there's a lot of work to be done. There's some nice coffee. Come.
come in. Come in. Mr. Marion. Good medicine. Is there anything else I must do, Mr. Mayor? No, that is all. That is all, thank you. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. supreme danger which lies in the use of intoxicants as a cure for mental suffering and which often renders the remedy worse than the disease is of course the morbid organic changes resulting from habitual use. Cessation of use causes what are known as symptoms of abstinence of a severity and painfulness proportionate to the usual dose and duration of the habit. These symptoms are always painful and a dose of the poison invariably affords relief from the immediate effects. Long continued usage therefore sets up in time the so-called double pull, the craving for characteristic euphoria and a dread of the painful symptoms of abstinence. There is a continual alternation between the deepest gloom of abstinence and a mental state which through continuous use of the drug resembles sluggish mental anesthesia rather than positive happiness. But for the individual concerned, this temporary respite is preferable to the normal condition of suffering. Could you go knock on the door and tell Mr. Murray supper is ready? What's the matter with you, child? He's strange. It's all right. You eat. Mr. Marais? Mr. Marais? Pa, oh, I'm hungry. Come in. Mr. 
is a letter for you, Mr. Murray. Oh. Spalas. Thank you. Sit down, one more. Mm. How are you feeling today? Not too well. I had another bad night. Yes, my sons. Tell me you're not sleeping too well. Is there nothing else we can do for you? Thank you, Wundors, but Dr. Fisher and I have tried everything. Only that the poles really help. That's the trouble with malaria. Malaria? Yes. Once it's in the bloodstream, it's virtually impossible to get it out. I picked it up in East Africa. No, thank you. There were 14 of us. I'd organized an expedition to get ammunition and medical supplies through to our people. Oh, in the war? Yes. <laughs> yeah, in the end, you know, we counted our bullets more carefully than I've ever counted the money in my pocket. It almost hurt to take aim at a Raynek, a pull the trigger. <laughs> What happened to the expedition? They died, one by one. It's a terrible region for malaria. In the end, it was just a Dr. Schultz and myself, but even we had caught it. An Indian doctor kept us alive with the pearls. That's how it all started. It varies, of course. Sometimes, for years, I can do with virtually nothing. Mm. At the times when it gets out of hand, I've got to increase the dosage. Yes, sir. In fact, I think it has come to that again. What do you mean, Mr. Barry? I think I should increase the dosage for the next few days. Fourteen or even sixteen pulls instead of ten. Mr. Murray, Dr. Fisher won't like that at all, you know. He's trying to reduce the number of pulls, not increase them. He doesn't know how badly I've been sleeping. But I told him in the last letter, and he said I mustn't do anything unless he tells me to. I am not asking for the lot. Please, Mr. Murray. With these pills and things, I don't know what's a lot and what isn't. You, you must excuse me now. This Brunswick is getting out of hand, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Castor oil for cows. That's what I know about. Zeggen, vader, wij we eet, laat ons nummer even vergeet. Amen. We're going up into the rankies tomorrow. Mr. Marais, would you like to go with? I'll see how I feel. Fresh air will do you good. You know, all this lying in bed can make a man feel worse than he really is. We must take guns, Pa. Mm. It's getting time for the guinea fowl. There's guinea fowl, and quail, and partridge. Do you hunt, Mr. Marais? I hunt. Dorsey is the marksman in our family. Ah, you're too impatient, that's all. <laughs> He's right, you know. <laughs> Mr. Murray. Please try to eat something. Uh, sorry, I'm not hungry. 
Please excuse me. Where is he going? Corey. I took it, Mary, as a guest in this house. Don't let me ever hear you ask that question again. Let's stop it. Auntie? You know what you're looking at? Something that millions of people never saw because they, they died too soon. King Harold. Thought it was an omen of misfortune. Tomaria could never remember its name. She called it Eugene Star. It has an orbit of the most extreme electricity. At a feeling, Halley's Comet is 35 times more distant from the Sun than here it is. It comes back on scene. But it will be. Marie! Shut up! I want to sleep! But you don't know what it's like in there. We also hear him. You've got wars between you and him. We're in the same room. That medicine of his is beginning to stink now. I get gnar when I go in there. I can stick it out. That's not what you said last night. Yeah, well, you know what it's like when you want to sleep. But the hell, Louis, so does he. If it's hard for us, I don't want to be in his shoes. He hasn't got any. Louis. You're forgetting your place and your manner, my son. Now, come on, let's get on with the letter. 
if you've got dear Dr. Fisher. I take my pen in hand to write to you and tell you how things are here at Stenkamskra. Here at Stenkamskra. Big letter S and full stop. Mr. Marais, no, no, make that advocate Marais, is fine. Well, it's true. It's happening just like the doctor said it would. Right. Advocate Marais is fine, but he's being a little bit difficult about the pulse. Little bit difficult to manage. Full stop, however. However. I have not given in to him. Well, Siri, this goes to the doctor, eh? Mr. Murray? Mr. Murray? Please, Tom Corey. No. Uh -uh. You listen to me. You've hardly eaten anything since you've been with us. I've watched you grow weaker, not stronger. If that is all Steam Cup's crowd can do for you. What is it with those pills, Mr. Murray? Didn't Dr. Fisher tell you as well? I'm a sick man. Yeah, but it's like a devil in this house. Putting you and us against each other. Angry voices. No, it's not right. I'm sorry, Don Cory. But I... I can't help myself. at all.
If you could listen, man. I can't, man. The pills are dangerous. Now listen, I promise you, the minute Dr. Fisher gets back to Heidelberg, I'll send you... Now. Wait any longer. I can't take a responsibility. Look outside. You don't know what to do. God, let me. Do as I say. It's my pain. Let me speak. Listen to me. Please, you won't do it. I promise you. Dr. Fisher will understand. Won't do it. I promise you. If you help me, I'll... I want to ask you again. Mr. Murray! I am only following Dr. Fisher's instructions! Read the bloody letter yourself if you don't believe me, man. Mr. I've been to Heidelberg a few moments with Dr. Fisher. Just let him see the state of the Mr. Murray, you are not listening to what I am saying! Dr. Fisser won't be back in Heidelberg. You're lying! You are all lying to me! No, no, I didn't. I didn't mean it. Listen, one word, I'll do anything. Anything you say. Will you please help me? It's worse than you, man. I can't stand it any longer. But if I give to you today, there won't be enough left for the rest of the week, man! We'll see to Dr. Fisser for more. I'll explain it was all my fault. He won't be warned me! I, I, I'll go with Liz tomorrow. Give it to him. No, give it. For God's sake, have pity. Please come, Mr. Murray. Take him to his room. Won't do it. No, no, no. Won't do it. All right, Mr. Murray. All right. Just go to your room. Please, Mr. Murray. Do you know what you are doing? In such cases, life becomes a continual struggle to render permanent by excessive use the very fleeting happiness these poisons bring. The bands of civilized life are eagerly snapped. The strongest springs of human conduct, love of friends and relatives, position, honor, are restraints more powerless than plumed reeds to stop the whirlwind in its course. Everything held priceless in normal life is carelessly cast into the maelstrom. The sufferer drifts into a vicious circle and, like the scorched fly, spins in vain upon the axis of his pain. Morgen. Morgen. Bedankt. 
can't even put my hand into it, Mr. Murray. Not hot enough. But you burn yourself, Mr. Murray. For God's sake, do as I tell you. It's not hot enough. Any minute now, Mr. Murray. Evelyn, is this true? What is it about the euphoric poisons that make them so irresistible to man and the baboon? Oh. In the psyche of an animal such as man, dominated by the new causal mind, the pain of the survival struggle has a single focus, the consciousness. Both man and the baboon experience consciousness as something based on pain and suffering. Get out.
He's a human being to us. Not an animal. Unlock the door. I never expected it of you, Dursi. Are we supposed to be his bloody nursemates? Who do you think you're talking to? Be reasonable, Pa. Who told us that he was going to behave like a... a I don't even have a word for it. Dr. Fisser. He warned us, Louis, when he asked us the first time. He said he was a sick man, Ma, not a mad man. And even that's not the truth. Louis, I'm beginning to lose my temper with you. Then you must not lose it, Pa, because Vrachty, I've had enough. I'm not sleeping in that room anymore. Then move out. I'll stay in there with him. So it's Dorsey, the Samaritan, now. He is sick, but... If you tell me that once more. Sick. You know what he really is, don't you? Why are we bluffing ourselves? Malaria. Those bloody pills aren't medicine. It's drugs he's taking. He's squashed than a drunk lot. It's the end as far as I'm concerned. And if father doesn't like it, I leave here myself. We're wasting our time. We'll never get better. Man is born with the instinct of animal. The baby clings to the mother, cries for food, and instinctively knows what to do when offered a breast. There is no memory, no conception of cause and effect, no consciousness. Then as it grows, the new mind slowly emerges, and as this happens, the instinctive soul becomes just as slowly submerged. It is this new mind which has helped man conquer the driest deserts, the highest mountains, the deepest valleys and the frozen poles, and yet survived. But nature demands payment for all she gives. The baboon and man pay an enormous price for their psyche, a price which is bound surely but slowly to bring about their natural extermination. Only fall tomorrow.
Oh, I think you're doing very well. A little more practice, Dorsey, and you could set yourself up in business. I'll tell you this much. I'd rather take up his tonsils than attempt what you're doing. Don't say that, Doctor. You make me more nervous. <laughs> make like so, Mr. Murray. I'll try tomorrow, Dorsey. Thanks, Mr. Murray. <clears throat> Any work yet? You must be joking, Andres. Uh, that will come next. You're over the worst now. Don't you think so? going to get you offered this time, Eugene. Some mail for you. You want me to read it for you? No, later. Your friend in Cape Town. Oh, uh, Wilhelm's class. Eugene, you've got your hands on your life again. Don't let go, buddy. Of course not. You said it yourself, Andres. I'm over the worst. It was just a question of time. That's why I agreed to come here. Diagnosis? Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. A coronary... Intermitter. Rhyming? No. It's here. Something like... Thou hast no youth, nor age, as it were an after-dinner sleep, dreaming of birth. Go on with your story. Do you know where the fairies live? No. No. I've seen them, Cookie. My name is not Cookie. I'm going to call you Cookie. My name is Cookie and there are no fairies here. How do you know? Because... Felt he's looking good, Tom Corey. Yeah, but it needs rain. <laughs> Just remembering what it looked like when we first came. 1905. Homestead burnt down. Bear felt. We outspanned and put up our tents there where the kraal is now. The better hearts. Two boys still small. Myself out of the concentration camp. 
Doris is long a prisoner of war. We had nothing when we started. Except that bitterness. Which canton, Cory? Turfontein. The rice course. Yeah. Two years. Longest two of my life. Not even the drought of 1910 and 1911 seemed to last as long. It wasn't the almighty's mercy we were waiting for. But an end to man's stupidity. And talk to me about the English. Those first two years, Stuart and the boys worked like Kaffirs on this land, Mr. Murray. Don't judge us harshly. Life hasn't been easy for us. Drought, locusts, the English. I know my men aren't gentle. I haven't judged anyone, Ton Cori. I hope no one has judged me. What do you say now, Cookie? How many do you think there are? I'm not sure. What do they look like? I'll tell you. Come with me. A vierkiet vraar, uit spinne rak, a doek vergaar. A rocky wit soos jening was, het sy toe aan mekaar gelas. Maar nauwelijks was het om haar lijf, toe kom haar winkie vlug en stijf. En met die eiting van sy sug, daar trek ons vierkie dier die lucht. Haar maaikie staar haar treerig aan, hoe sy hoog oor die bome gaan, tot sy met heel haar rokkie fijn, daar in die verte vlat verdwijn. As jy een rokkie ooit besit, van spinnerak of iets soos dit, Pas op hoe jy jou dan verroer, en wenkie mag jou glad vervoer. Ja, my vader was the last one to use it. When he died, my mother made us take it down. It was the only thing we ever argued about. He's my poor. Ah, he liked his top. He's a condenser, ja. I don't know, but there's something here. That's it. Yeah. I could get this to work again. Well, go ahead. To tell you the truth, I don't mind a drop myself. I've never been a heavy drinker. I don't mean to start now. I'm sorry. Please, Mr. Murray. I'm sorry. What the hell with this Mr. and Advocate business? Listen, I said it before and I'll say it again because it's the truth. I'm only a farmer. Maybe not such a good one at that. And there are some things I don't understand. And Prachter Eugene, you're one of them. Make allowances, man. We'll need something to put them on Puri. That's right. Do you know what this is for, Steely? Yeah. <laughs> Good.
Unmistakable. The bouquet, the body. Steam comes call 26. You're good here. You have hidden talents, Eugene. Just a good memory and a little elementary science. There were quite a few stalls around in the Waterbird during my time there. And one or two very potent recipes. Dr. Fisser doesn't approve. Well, nor for that matter disapprove, Advocate Murray. It's just being a doctor I find myself of necessity, advocating the cause of moderation. Then by all means plead it. But as one advocate to another, let me just say that I don't think you stand a chance. The judge is biased. Name me a civilization, Andres, or for that matter, a race or tribe of men that have not had their euphoric drug, not made, you'll forgive me quoting myself, habitual recourse to the use of a poison to induce a feeling of happiness as a remedy for the pain of consciousness. Ah, oh, steady. Finish. <laughs> that with thy potent rhetoric stealest away the purposes of wrath, pleadest effectually for relenting pity, and in one night's heavenly sleep callest back to the guilty man visions of his infancy and hands washed pure from blood. Beautiful, but dangerous rhapsody. I know. I'm not justifying anything, Andres. Merely stating a fact. That's all Steery wants. How did you yourself describe it in Lotus Land? The salach and nuts dun and Well, that's cheating, Eugene. There's more to the poem than just that line. It pleads the cause of moderation, not excess. Do me the honor. All right. From where Nordir speaks up. <laughs> Nordia addresses the nation. A fiant betrayed us, Obrigas. And a fiant op wie ons moet let. Te glad sit die altaver to a moeders. Trekkers wee is per slot, trekkers vet. Veel beter is dan my eindloos te swerwe, die in gevaar aan ons man weer te staan, as hier in gemak te verderwe, in een smorende vet te vergaan. Veel voorspoed wordt later ketten, en het woonland die luie gemak. Te gronde gaan ons door vervitting, moren trek ons van hier bak en zak. Die aand nog het koos van een merwe en odee die ou vetspan verlaat. Hulle bieden haar swoege en swerwe, is alweer van normale formaal. Maar hoe dit met die ander gesteld is, dit weet nuchter. Een rondloper hier beweer dat hulle allemaal gesmeld is. En daar hou we die naam, vet, rufie. <laughs> ah, daarvoor jou Ursinus, Ursinus. Lovely little old lady. First citizen of the world. And the reason? A soul that had escaped the shackles of instinct and was able to memorize the relationship between cause and effect. Prime attribute of the new mind. Ah. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. Mm -hmm. Come on, Andres. You're a surgeon. Put eyes in those sockets. Sir? So? 
Pharaoh helps him. It hurts, therefore I am. Now nobody. I'm Will Ergerson. How's your writing going, Andre? You tell me. Another poem. After you've corrected it. Brenda. She's passing through Heidelberg in a week or so. And? She wants to know if there's a chance of seeing me. What did you say? I haven't replied yet. What is our doctor advice? To avoid emotional complications, both of you. That won't happen, Andres. It's all over. But I never did say goodbye to her properly. Or thank you for helping us. Your doctor doesn't remember a thing. And he hopes for his sake that you will do the same. I'll arrange with my driver to bring her out. Dr. Fisher seemed very pleased with your progress. Yes. Then why aren't you? You said I wasn't. You don't look it. Please. My name is Eugene Marin, Dr. Corey. I'm 54 years old. What does that mean? I don't know. I'll tell you what I know. You are getting better. Dr. Fisser has every reason to be pleased. You already look years younger. Your... Your friends will hardly recognize you when you go back. It's Jen Com's crawl must take all the credit for that, Uncle Lee. You've all been very patient. Only friends, Mr. Murray? No family? Family? Of course. We Marais are like the baboon. You'll find us wherever it's possible to survive. There's a troop of us down in the Cape. Another in the Free State. Victoria. I've got a son. My wife died a long time ago. Good night, Mr. Murray. My first acquaintance with the baboons of Dwarenhoek took place under the most favorable of circumstances. a succession of very good rainy years in the Waterberg before my arrival there. As the prophet aforetime declared, the wilderness was like Eden and the desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness were found therein. without saying that our troop of baboons enjoyed this state of affairs to the full. They were fat and frolicsome, 
and more beautifully bearded than we ever saw them afterwards. We little knew when first we settled in that happiness was only on the surface and that the shadow of perpetual tragedy always darkened the lives of these baboons. The circumstances which rendered these clever and extremely nervous animals indifferent to the presence of their arch foe man were due to a long succession of events. The South African had left the area in unpeopled solitude for a number of years, and when eventually the farmers returned, they were for several years without rifles and ammunition. The baboons were very quick to realize their helplessness and took full advantage of it. baboons generally reached their sleeping place sometime before sunset. Among the younger members of the troop, this was the favorite time for frequent romping games. It was especially the hour of the little ones. With the setting of the sun, however, and the first deepening of the shadows, a singular transformation came over the entire scene. Silence fell upon them. In few phases of their behavior, did the troop of baboons appear to me more human-like than in the unquestionable expression of this evening melancholy. The older ones assumed attitudes of profound dejection. It is hardly possible to avoid the conclusion that the chakma suffers from the same attribute of pain, which is such an important ingredient of human mentality, and that the condition is due to the same cause, namely, the suffering inseparable from the new mind, which, like man, it has acquired in the course of its evolution. There. That should make our bath as happy as it comes out. My son and Mr. Marie's most dedicated pupil. Would you like tea in the fork, Alma? It's quite pleasant as you honestly. And make yourselves comfortable. I've got everything ready. So this is it. Sten comes crawl. Unless his few letters said nothing. It's gentler than I had imagined. Spring, Brenda. It was a bleak landscape when I arrived. There's still time for a few late frosts. How are you? Fine. And you? If you want anything, I'll be in the kitchen. And you? Holiday? Come. Your mother's only got two there and she needs four. Your little friend doesn't like me. You're going to break another heart, Eugene. Okay. Strange child. She does believe in fairies, though. Are you poor? You're looking much better than I'd imagined. Relaxed, alive. You're writing again, Andres tells me. I've had the time. They live a quiet life here. Poetry? Not much. I'm putting all my energy into my magnum opus, The Soul of the Ape. Back to your baboons again. Back? I never ever left them. Tell me about how that is. I've got him in a good school now, and he misses you, your walks in the felt. 
I was hoping the microscope would keep him busy. <laughs> Too busy. It's becoming impossible to get him away from her to do his homework. He gets his best marks in nature study, though. Excellent. How much longer do you think you're going to stay here? Not much. I've had all the rest I need now. Andrew says you might be moving to Pretoria if applied for a post at the zoo. I'm only thinking about it. Gustav Pella is talking to Milan, Minister of the Interior, on my behalf. But I'm in two minds. If it's a purely administrative post, there won't be time for any research. That is what I need. I'm tired of writing vacuous newspaper articles for people too lazy to think for themselves. If I work seriously now, there might just be enough time left for me to apply myself to what I have to do. So don't attach any significance do to... Eugene, stop! You're not talking to me. Stop running over. I know it's over. I simply came to see you. Good. Well, it does help to know you're alive, Uber. It wouldn't have worked, Brenda. You know me well enough to know that. Please, anything but don't say you're sorry. I'm not. I wasn't going to. Give this to Albertus. Tell him it's the lower jawbone of a black bat jackal. I found it in the field. Thank you. Eugene, live and work. You've got so much to give. I hope someday you find somebody who can... Goodbye, Brenda. Bye, Eugene. See, the hole through which the poison comes. Not at the end. If it was, the fang would be plugged by the flesh of the animal it bites, and the poison wouldn't come through. The hole is just above the point. The point makes an open path through the flesh for the poison. <laughs> the first hypodermic, you will see. Mine is just a copy of this. be flying soon. Not long till the first rains. That's right. An nuptial flight. That's how it all starts, Torsi. In the dry districts, they sometimes have to wait for years before they get the chance to fly. Imagine it. Years underground in darkness, waiting for that one moment. And when it comes, not only last for three seconds, for a distance of only three yards, they will enjoy the exquisite thrill of flight. To really understand this antique dorsi, try to think of it as a single animal. Some of the termites forming the mouth and stomach, others the weapons of defense, still others the sexual organs. And all the queen 
The brain of that animal is almost to do her a disservice. She's the soul. If that's true, Mr. Marais, then what you're doing now is most a sin, isn't it? No, sir. We'll eat them tomorrow. My curiosity is also an appetite, Dorsey. Maybe. But I didn't hear you say grace. Man can ask too many questions, Mr. Murray. You know what the preacher said in the Bible. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. I wish I had your faith, Dorsey. My mother died in my arms. Just before the end, there was an expression there, a look in her eyes. I asked her what it was she saw. She said, nothing. There is nothing. will be offered completely. You're writing again. I am not. What's that? I've gone as far as I can, you don't stand comes crowd. Don't you understand, Andres? If I'm lucky, I see you once a week for an hour. For the rest, the mayors are decent people. And I have come to like and respect them. But for God's sake, man, there's no intellectual stimulus or provocation. I'm living on old ideas. Eugene, I'm not asking you to stay here indefinitely. Feels like that. The cure has become a prison sentence. No one is. I've had enough. But I'm not just talking to you as a doctor or as a friend. There's more involved in the life and work of Eugene Murray than just a patient's recovery or a friendship. Stop that nonsense, Andres. My life is my own. It won't ever be a national monument. Too much has happened already. I've tried before, you know. I've been on it for 30 years now. The most I can hope for is to keep it under control. No, as a doctor, I refuse to accept that. Eugene, have you forgotten what you were taking before you came here? In one week, you bumped enough into yourself to kill 60 men. For God's sake, Andres! 60 men, one man. 10 grains, half a grain. Eight pills, two pills. Listen, Woody, it's got nothing to do with either arithmetic or chemistry. What do you want? No, don't tell me. I can hear your inimitable phalanx of bedside platitudes lining themselves up. Me, sober, sensible, normal, happily married forever after. Stop wasting your time, Andres. It's as much a part of me now as the spelling of my name. If you want me for a friend, accept me for what I am. How long has it been now? The two of us. Are you right? Two years, three years. What does that measure? Nothing arithmetic. I could take out your appendix, Buddy. Through a hole so small you wouldn't be able to slip a cufflink through it. If you ever have one again. I know. It would be so simple, wouldn't it? if you could apply your scalpel with the same precision and efficacy in other directions as well. Yes. Yes, I would have liked to believe there was something I could do to remedy life. Oh, I see. That's the name of the ailment. Yes. Diagnosed as such a few thousand years before Christ by the nameless author of an Egyptian papyrus. Title? Dialogue between the writer and his son. 
In it, the writer came to the conclusion that the very existence of life was founded on sorrow and pain, and that there was ultimately only one perfect remedy to put an end to one's existence. A Sutu have a nice turn of phrase for that. Belly in Dava, end of dialogue. There's a morbid streak of self-indulgence in your nature, Eugene. You haven't got a monopoly on pain and sorrow, you know. I too had a wife. Her name was also Letty. But I also tried to sing. Come on, Andres. The song of Fanny Sekabos Ralph will have his special place in our language for as long as it is spoken. But don't try to teach me your song, Woody. Because if you succeeded, there's one mystery above all others that awed the Bushmen. How a string of badger sinew pulled taut over an empty pumpkin gourd could make a sound that in turn could make men laugh or cry, dance or wait for rain. It so impressed them as one of the ultimate mysteries that they've decided that men thought, dreamt, imagined with strings. That every man, in fact, had one song all of his own. Sounds like their word for soul, doesn't it? How much longer did you want, Andres? No. No more arithmetic. How much longer, Andres? <laughs> You're a bastard, you know that. Then why do you persist? Medical ethics. Two weeks. Let's get on with it. Eh? Tell one dose to reduce the dosage to one every second day. Yes, Cookie. Why were you cross with the doctor? Who says I was cross? I heard you. I wasn't cross with the doctor. Who then? Myself, I suppose. Why? for always being a guest in someone else's home. Haven't you got a home? Come to think of it, I have, Cookie. Come, let's go for a walk in it. isn't it, Cookie? It's not green. You must learn to see and love it for what it is. Don't ask it to be something else. It's dry, but not dead. There's a lot of life down there. There. I've spent hours trying to find one of these nests. 
Even when it was only a few yards away from me, as this one was. Three babies. Not yet, but they'll try. They've got a lot of enemies. Sometimes they fly so high you can't see them. Do you think they can hear the angels singing up there? You look in vain in nature for love, sympathy, pity, justice, protection of the weak and innocent. From the very beginnings of life, we hear a chorus of anguish. Pain is a condition of existence. Escape from pain, a purpose in all striving. Blaas uit oor diep rivier, die vlam van haat, die groot verlange wat my nooit verlaat. De priester en de profeet waarden van den staal en brink, sy sien verslonden van den wijn, sy doden van sterk en brink, sy dwalen in het gezicht, sy waggelen in het gericht. Want alle tafels... Happiness can be bought for a penny and carried in a waistcoat pocket. The chancery of dreams, seven heavens above the seventh heaven. So that there is no place to come. When do you then the kennis learn? All the candles are alight. There's the moon lives again, black man. Then I've getrokken them from the borsten. The evil is undone. But it is forbid. Hands washed pure from blood. Forbid. Up forbid. Regel. Up regel. Here in Vienna. Yago has not destroyed his body. Daarom zal hij door belachelijke lippen regel op regel hier in weinig, daar in weinig. Daarom zal hij door belachelijke lippen en door een andere toon. The evil is done. With hands washed pure from blood, you can again enjoy her most subtle perfection. You tell Dr. Fisher to fetch him. Doubt, darkness, and death. Stop the car. What? I want to say grace. Sy sê, ek voor de rasse heel gereg, die vrug van eindeloze pijn. Ek smeet hul oor die berge weg, en smoor hul in die sandpoestijn. Sy sê, nooit het ek iets gegee, ek laat hul honger dors en bloei. Hul worstel deur en sterf gedwee, en min my as een vlam wat skrooi. Tien male moes hul vecht vir my, tien male moes hul kerm en stoei, tien male in die stof gebrei. Tien male opstaan weer en bloei. My liefde dult geen evenaar, Vergeefs die weerklag van die vrou, Van klinkies al die stom gebaar, My liefde verge enkel trouw. Hul diepste hoop is lang verteer, Vergaan in rook en as en bloed, Hul sak aanbiddend om my neer, Ek voel hul trane op my voet. Ek adem nooit hul name meer, Nooit kon ek hulle kinders noem, in vreemde tale hoor ek weer, die dove fluistering van hul roem. En vluimend as een swaard geheg, bly van my liefde slechts die pijn. Ek smeet hul oor die berge weg, en smoor hul in die sandpoestijn. Ja. 